Hey everybody, hope you guys all are being safe. So this is the 2022 13 inch MacBook Pro of Apple's new M2 Silicon. I've been using this machine for the past week now, doing all my work on it, including editing this video. And I have a lot of thoughts on this machine. So when this laptop was introduced, at WWDC a couple of weeks ago, it got a little bit of a lukewarm reaction because some people felt that this M2 MacBook Pro was caught in between two better Apple laptops. Because at the same event, Apple also introduced M2 MacBook Air. The Air model got most of the attention because it had a newer design, it had new colors, it had thinner bezels, and it had more ports. Now all these changes are not new. Apple actually introduced them last year when it introduced the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook with M1 Pro and M1 Max. I actually purchased a 16 inch M1 Max machine myself because this was at the time Apple's most powerful portable computer. So now if you look at it from the point of view of a consumer, this M2 MacBook Pro is not as powerful as the M1 Max or the M1 Pro MacBooks from last year because the M1 Max and M1 Pro still has more cores than the M2 chip. And also this M2 MacBook Pro has an older, more outdated design compared to the M2 MacBook Air. And it's also 100 US dollars more expensive than the M2 MacBook Air. So a lot of people felt like this machine didn't need to exist. And to be honest, even if you look at the way Apple handled it, it looks like this machine is an afterthought because for some reason, even though the M2 MacBook Air got the new design that we saw in the M1 Max MacBook, this M2 MacBook Pro did not get a new design. This is the exact same body casing recycled design from the 2020 Intel MacBook Pro and also the 2018 Intel MacBook Pro. So at first I also felt the same way, like why did this machine need to exist? But after using it and after checking out all the prices, I come to realize there is a small group of people for whom this laptop makes sense. It's a small group because for most people, you're still probably better off buying the M2 MacBook Air, but there is a spot for this MacBook Pro. So as I said, this M2 chip is not as powerful as the M1 Max or the M1 Pro MacBooks from last year, but those MacBooks start at minimum $2,000. If you add anything like more RAM, more storage, it's gonna easily bump up to $2,500. My 16 inch machine actually cost me almost 4,000 US dollars. This thing starts at $1,299. So really no more expensive than a flagship smartphone in 2022. So let's go over the hardware really quick. There's really not much to go over in terms of outer hardware because this is the exact same body as in the 2020 MacBook Pro. So that means you have probably seen this machine out and about. So you have a 13.3 inch LCD panel, 2560 by 1600 resolution, maximum brightness of 500 nits. The device weighs three pounds. So I wouldn't say it's ultra portable, but definitely it's something you can fit into your bag and carry around all day and not find it too heavy. There's a 58 watt hour battery inside that can last about 11 hours of basic productivity use, meaning streaming Spotify and surfing the web and maybe typing words into WordPress. If you're doing video editing, then the battery life will drop a little bit, but I'll go into that later. Now the ports, unfortunately, is a little bit disappointing. You only have two USB-C Thunderbolt ports here and a headphone jack on the right, and you charge the machine using the USB-C port. And the charging brick included is a 67 watt charging brick. Now this is unfortunate because with last year's 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, Apple introduced MacBooks with more ports. This is my 16 inch MacBook Pro from last year. It has three USB-C ports, one headphone jack, MagSafe charging port, an HDMI port, and then also my favorite SD card slot. I am a YouTuber, so I'm constantly recording video and I have to move video files over with my memory card. And with this machine, I just plug the memory card into the slot and move files over immediately. But if I want to do that here, I have to use a freaking dongle. Now, some people will also complain that the bezels on this display are a little bit thick compared to the M2 MacBook Air and the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. But I'm okay with it because those MacBook screens have a notch. This one, at least, you're getting a uniform display. Now, one of the strong points of MacBook Pros have always been their excellent speakers. And this 13-inch model, even though the speakers aren't as good as the 16-inch, it is still really good. Check, let's check it out. So we'll go 50% volume. We'll go to max volume. And yes, one more old bit that returned after being eliminated in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro last year is this touch bar, which allows me to treat brightness, volume, all of that. Now, a lot of people, for some reason, were not fans of the touch bar. They were really happy when Apple got rid of it last year, but I'm okay with it. I actually like that 
I can scrub through videos like this by sliding on the touch bar. And also I can switch between tabs of a website by just tapping on it. And you can even see a mini preview of the website on the touch bar, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, there's not much more to talk about in terms of hardware, at least from the outside, because this is a tried and true, yeah, a little bit boring design. Not even compared to like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but even compared to like my Huawei MateBook X Pro, look at how much thinner the bezels are of this laptop compared to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. But again, this is not a machine you buy for looks, this is a machine you buy for performance. And the M2 chip, it's a really good upper mid-tier chip for most people. Like obviously if you are a heavy duty content creator, you're gonna want the M1 Max or even the M1 Ultra. But for most people, like 98% of people out there, the M2 is more than powerful enough. So if you follow the computing industry at all, you already know that the M1 chip was a smashing success when it launched in late 2020. A lot of people didn't think Apple's own chip, which is a small mobile chip, could power a whole laptop better than Intel processors, but M1 somehow did it. You know, in terms of peak performance, you can argue an Intel processor is still more powerful than an M1 chip, but the M1 chip was so much more efficient. Battery life was significantly better. And also when you're rendering videos, the machine stayed completely cool, while an Intel MacBook would get really hot and the fan would need to boot up. Now to show you how efficient the M2 chip is, I did an 8K video rendering test on Final Cut Pro. Now Final Cut Pro is optimized for Apple Silicon, so it's really gonna show you how powerful the M2 chip is. So this machine is an M2 with 16 gigs of RAM, and it rendered a four minute long 8K 30 video in Final Cut Pro in just three minutes and 52 seconds. I did the same rendering test with my girlfriend's 2020 Intel Core i7 MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM, so double the RAM, and it took 16 minutes and 24 seconds to render the same clip. I know it's not quite fair because this 2020 Intel Mac is running on a two year old Intel processor, but trust me, even when I move over to video editing tests later, using new generation Intel processor, it's still gonna fall behind the M2. Now I tried the same test on Adobe Premiere Pro too. Adobe Premiere Pro is not optimized for Apple Silicon, so it takes much longer to render clips, but even then the M2 MacBook Pro is able to render a four minute long 8K clip in 33 minutes and 17 seconds. The Intel MacBook Pro took 50 minutes. And then I did the same test on the Huawei MateBook X Pro running an 11th generation Intel Core i7 and it took 55 minutes. So even running software that's not optimized for Apple Silicon, this still finished like 20, 30 minutes faster than Intel processors, even a relatively new one in my Huawei MateBook X Pro. Now, I personally don't care about benchmarks that much. I care more about real world tests like video exporting, but here are some benchmark numbers for you anyway. So as you can see, the M2 chip is about 20 to 30% more powerful than the M1 chip, but still less powerful than the M1 Pro chip. Now, I personally don't have a Windows laptop right now with a 12th generation Intel Core processor, but rest assured, I asked my colleagues to do the same test. And yeah, if you're talking about like a new 12th generation Intel Core i7, that's a little bit spec'd out. It it will score higher points than the M2 in benchmarks, but where the M2 wins is in efficiency. So all the benchmark numbers you just saw, I basically ran them two times. The first time it was plugged in, the second time it was unplugged, and the M2 pumped out almost the exact same numbers where the machine was plugged into power or running on battery. You can't say that with Intel or AMD's Ryzen machines. With all those laptops running AMD's Ryzen 5000 or Intel Core i7, i9, if you unplug, performance dips by anywhere from 10 to 20%. The M2 is efficient in that it basically keeps the same performance whether it's plugged in or not. So that means the M2 MacBook Pro is a really good video editing machine for maybe entry level to mid level content creators. Obviously, if you are a top tier content creator like MKBHD and you're constantly editing, rendering for 8K video that lasts like 20 minutes, you're gonna want the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra machines. But this is more than good enough for like 95% of YouTubers out there. Even me, I use the M1 Max because you know, I like to splurge and buy the most powerful thing. But to be honest, if I don't use the M1 Max anymore and I just use this, this can make do. This can totally do all my work for me, including making YouTube videos and writing articles for XDA. So one of the weaknesses of this M2 MacBook Pro is that it can only output to one external display. It's not, a big deal to me because I have an awesome external monitor. This is the Huawei Mate View that gives me enough screen real estate. But I do know some people who like to use two different monitors and the M M2 MacBook Pro is quite disappointing because he could not 
use a second monitor. So that's one of the shortcomings. The M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks can output to two or more monitors. Another weakness of the M2 MacBook Pro is the existence of the M2 MacBook Air. Like I already said, the M2 MacBook Air runs on the exact same chip as this machine. The only difference is this machine has a fan. But even during my 8K video rendering test, the fan didn't really kick in. So unless I step up my workload even more, I'm pretty sure the M2 MacBook Air will give me the exact same performance as the M2 MacBook Pro. Even editing 4K videos, I'm pretty sure will be exactly the same. So the use cases, the benefits of having the Pro over the Air, it's very, very minimal. So ultimately, it does feel like this machine has a small niche because the M2 MacBook Air, it's gonna be the machine for most people. And then if you are a more serious creative professional, you're gonna want the M1 Max or the M1 Pro. So this really has a small audience, but hey, that audience still exists. And I guess Apple wants to cater to literally everybody. So in terms of battery life, like I already said, for basic office productivity use, I've been mean, outputting to external monitor, writing articles, this thing can last like almost 11 hours on a single charge. Now, when you're really pushing the machine, like when I was rendering the 8K video on Adobe Premiere, after 30 something minutes, I did lose about 30% of battery in this machine. So that means if you're doing video editing, this thing will only last you maybe like five or six hours, which is still more than good enough because very few people are gonna edit and render videos for over six hours without like plugging in the laptop. That's just kind of like unheard of. So yeah, this is the M2 Mapper Pro. This machine is ideal for creative professionals who either cannot afford to or just do not want to pay well over $2,000 for a laptop. Because if you can pay over $2,000, then get the 14 inch or 16 inch Mapper Pro. It has a better silicon, it has a slot for SD card, and it will you know render a little bit faster too. But if you just cannot pay $2,000, you wanna save a little bit of money, then this is a good middle option. $1,300 and it's more than enough for most YouTubers and most creative professionals. But then again, there's still the M2 MacBook Air, which should give you same performance in like 99% of situations. And it has a newer design with thinner bezels with an SD card slot. So yeah, small audience for this machine, but there is an audience. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully I will get my hands on the M2 MacBook Air next. So I will test that one and have a review. And I also have a lot more content coming up including flagship phones from a couple of brands I can't talk about yet. So if you're interested in more content like this, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.